Hey, thanks for dropping by to the Planners on Purpose podcast, created by Naomi Tucker, CMP. Now, this space is for the event planners to encourage and empower you so that you can fully live your life on purpose. So before we dig in, please take a moment to subscribe so you get future shows. Now, here she comes, your host, Naomi. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Planners on Purpose podcast. I'm Naomi Tucker, your host, and I'm excited to be with you today. In this episode, we're going to be discussing some trends that are occurring in social events and a little bit more. I'll be doing that alongside my guest today, who's Gore Yohashian, Chief Marketing Officer with Permi. I'm excited that he's here and looking forward to jumping right in. Gore, welcome to the Planners on Purpose podcast. Thank you, Naomi. I'm so happy to have you here. But before we, we jump in the thick of it, I want to share, I want you to share a little bit more about you um, and your journey into the event industry and what brought you this way and landed you at Permeet, if you wouldn't mind sharing with our listeners. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So my name is Gord. I'm currently the chief marketing officer at Permeet. It's a startup, but very ambitious one. I started my journey in marketing. I studied in a French university in Armenia, then I continued my studies in Lyon, France. I have 10 years of experience, uh, not only in the event or marketing industry, but many other giants, technological. And, uh, but uh, however, beyond the titles, uh, I am an introvert or deeply values personal connections. While this may sound paradoxical for a CMO, it's this very nature of mine that's always pushed me to find ways to make human interactions more meaningful. And it's why I resonate so deeply with Permit. It's not just an app for me, it's a tool that bridges the gap between digital convenience and heartfelt personal events. I can tell how we started the idea of, of the app. So I remember being at a close friend's surprise birthday party a few years ago. Everything was like meticulously planned from decor to the menu. Uh, the ambience was super fine, but what struck me most was a moment when my friend opened a gift. She had received multiple, multiple times from different guests. So it led to some lighthearted laugh, but uh, it got me thinking. So in our era of digital connectivity, why do such overlaps and gaps in communication still exist in personal events? And also. I began to notice that while we have apps and platforms for, for almost every professional event, personal event planning was still scattered across, across some calendar, calendars, nodes, random mobile apps, the, uh, the messengers, chats, etc. And there was a missing bridge between personalization, digitalization, and the simplicity in the personal event space. So because in in the business event industry, that there are professionals that are working and they know the, the complicated tools, how to use them. But for a simple user, let's say that, that those tools are not very convenient to use. So I was seeing this gap and uh, reminiscing about my friend's party. I felt a strong pull towards creating and finding the solution. And that's how the journey with Termit began. So it wasn't just about planning events, but about enriching personal connections through thoughtful planning. Wow. I think that that's great. And by way of doing that, you make it easier for those that are planning events. So tell me when you're saying personal events, I'm assuming that that's similar to the social event world. So we're talking about um, wedding planning, like birthday planning, yeah. those types of plans. Yeah, exactly. Just for positioning in marketing, we use the terms like personal event, like private event, mm-hmm. uh, just to show that we are about those niche and not about like corporate events, exhibitions, etc. Okay, great. So t- what kind of events that you see utilizing your tool with Permit? Mm-hmm. So it's mainly space, 
birthdays or some anniversaries. Mm -hmm. Also, we have noticed many gender reveal parties, baby shower, because it's super convenient. And not many weddings yet. We had some, but mainly events where there are 20 to 40, 50 people participating. Okay. That's wonderful. I think, I think this is a wonderful idea. So was it just you that you created this tool or did you work with the team? Like, tell me about what that discussion was to make this different, this shift, or I guess this pivot in your, in your career. Was it something that was an easy switch for you or was there some, some difficulties at first? Thank you for this question. And I can tell that we are working as a as a team, there are different responsibilities in the team, but it's for the startups, it's particular, especially. So every, everyone is involved in everything. So even if someone is a developer, he knows how to code, how to create code. Another one, for example, me, I'm marketing, chief marketing officer, I know how to promote. We are constantly into like meetings, calls, discussions how to improve. Everyone knows the feedback of the users. So that's, that's the point. What, what I appreciate the most working in a startup incorporate in, in big corporations, the communication is much slower and much formal. So, and myself, as I said, I am an introvert and I like small groups, like relate to each other, help each other, etc. Yeah, I, I guess I would classify as an introvert too in, in some ways. And I think there's some of the tests that test to be like a, a amnivert, but definitely like the fact that you, you're working in a small team and deciding a, to make a big impact with, with the team that you have. Now, what trends are you seeing in the personal event space right now? Are there specific trends that you're seeing that people are utilizing or doing as they're planning events? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are some trends I see. I can, like, I see a trend toward more personalized and uh, unique experiences. Like, I noticed that people are now moving away from cookie cutter events and are looking for ways to infuse their personality in you know, every aspect of uh, celebration. There are also some other trends. For example, sustainability. I know there's a growing consciousness about the environmental footprint of uh, events, like eco-friendly decorations, uh, you know, sustainable gifts. Zero waste based parties, I see even organized by, by our app, and those are becoming more popular. So maybe some digitalizations of some stuff that you been doing like 10 years ago by hands, by taking notes on the paper now. It, it is getting like it's shifting towards digitalization. But the important part is that also, for example, we have an app and promote app as a solution to easily streamline the event organization, but we are promoting the like integrity, the code, connectivity, the heartfelt gatherings of people. So the real communication, that's what important the most, not the virtual. Maybe we'll someday replace the real interactions between people, but not now. I don't yeah. see it coming now. I agree. It's, I think authentic connection is always going to be there. It seems like that the humanity, the humanity part <laughs> of who we are will always, I guess, resonate. It's really great to see a lot of these technological inventions happening and they make our lives easier, but having the opportunity to still connect personally is definitely important. Face-to-face -face is still an important, important aspect. Do you have any other trends that you're seeing to share? I think sustainability is, is definitely huge right now in, mm -hmm. the, in the event space. Maybe that uh, people are now shifting from that extravagant displays to prioritizing like some unique experiences. It might be about like setting up a cozy backyard movie night for a birthday instead of the lavish, focusing more on the quality of the moment, just not just the scale. Maybe those, 
I saw some events that like contain like hybrid celebrations. And what I mean that <clears throat> is the event where a kind of mix of in person and virtual attendees come together and participate in an event. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I liked when you were talking about the focus on quality versus having extravagant displays. You know, it's like there's time and a place for the extravagant display, but I do also see the focus on the connection. And I mm-hmm. believe that probably has always been within the event planning space, but it seems as though there's a more targeted effort on ensuring that we're paying attention to those connections in a more meaningful way than in the past. And and that, that might be something that have came from maybe, maybe from COVID, kind of manifested out of COVID mm-hmm. because of us not being able to connect in that way. So now people are really wanting that connection. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And also in our case, it's also a post-COVID product. Mm -hmm. So we decided that people of the in real life events and real life gatherings. And also what is, I think also the trends are personalization. So I talked about it a bit, but I mean that gone are the days of generic themes now. Events talk, events tell stories. So whether it's mapping, for example, the journey of a couple, a couple at an anniversary party or building a birthday time around a person's favorite book, maybe like favorite movie in a thematic way. And so there are, there is a lot of personal narrative being integrated now. So. Yeah, absolutely. Rather than generate uh, terms. Absolutely. When we talk about, I know we talked a little bit about technology, but wanted to ask you this question and what you're seeing mm-hmm. kind of on your side with marketing, just the introduction or right now of chat, GBT, other AIs within events. Is that something that, how is Permeat addressing this either within their tool or within their business or just as a marketing expert? How do you see that impacting the industry? Great question. So as I'm into this market, I research every player in the market and I see that in different apps that provide different solutions, they have strong integrated AIs that do everything we can say. But in the event industry, I don't see much implementation and it is not used, we, we don't see the full potential used of the AI in the event industry, especially in personal events. So there are some AIs integrated in some platforms like Evite, it can, based on your preferred event, it can propose like invitation card designs that will suit well for your event. But for example, those chatbots, chat GPT, for example, it's, it's, it can help, or for example, give ideas so you can create a, a bit more interesting menu, but you can do it yourself. It can help like creating a playlist for the authenticate party, for example. In, in our case, we don't have AI integrated yet, but we have it in our backlog. So we are developing now our AI. So. We can integrate and it will be, it will like take the role of the virtual assistant of event planner. And in the near future, we'll release the version with AI of permit and we will be constantly improving that. Mm. So in the event industry, in the personal sector, like the social events, I don't see such tremendous usage of AI right now. Yes. What about you? I, I see it. I see it happening. I see I see people using it, especially those that are definitely kind of on that front side that they like to explore different things and they're definitely seeing that it's making their lives easier. However, there still probably needs to be more education out there to help event planners find ways to use it, especially use it within their organizations. But it's been great to see tools like yours and other technology platforms integrate AI so that makes it easier for planners to 
to use it in their day to day. I I hope that it helps make things easier for sure and not add on to what the planners already have on their on their plates. But I think it's I think it's great. I think I think it's great as long as we monitor it and don't just let things go. <laughs> I think it could be a really great, a really great tool for us to make things easier. That's for sure. Yeah, but I think the biggest challenge similarly with, with, with AI would just be how we make sure that we do not make it harder on ourselves and make it easier on ourselves. So I think that that would be the biggest challenge when it comes to AI. (laughs) So, so tell me about some of the other challenges that you probably see on your end when it comes to planning events? What are some of the struggles that you see? And I assume your tool definitely makes things much easier, but what do people struggle with? Okay, so we have done many searches and one big thing is managing expectations because everyone has a unique vision for an event, be it the host or the attendees, I guess. So align, aligning these various expectations to deliver a universally enjoyable experience can be challenging. Another one is personalization and general appeal, maybe because we have talked about that. Now I see a trend, we see a trend. Because while personalizing, personalizing an event makes it special, there is a fine line between tailoring it to individual preferences and ensuring it has a broad appeal to all the guests. Another thing is um, budget constraints. Those personal social events often have a set budget. Mm-hmm. And uh, ensuring a memorable experience while adhering to this budget and making choices that optimize both cost and quality is a continuous challenge. Maybe logis- logistical complexities from venue selection, catering to entertainment, transportation, mm-hmm. maybe gathering feedback and continuous improvement, especially for those who organize events regularly. Collecting feedbacks and ensuring each event is better than the last is also a continuous challenge. Keeping up with trends mm-hmm. because the world of events is dynamic and what was trendy and appealing a year ago might be passe today. So keeping abreast of current trends trends while also staying true to the personal touch and the essence of the event can be can be also a big challenging. Yeah, definitely the one that I resonate with the budget when you talked about the budget, because it seems as though we're working with the same amount of monies, but costs obviously are going high all around. Are you seeing a specific area of an event planner's budget be a big challenge? I can't tell exactly on like about example of the cases, I don't know. But I see that uh, usually it varies because we have the statistic, we collect the statistic of the events organized. And um, yeah, I see the increase in the cost, but uh, I can tell if it's going to like multiply, I don't know. I can't tell. This yeah, exactly. I was just wondering, because I know with a lot of corporate events, the cost of, let's say, audiovisual or production, that's gone high. But I know that you have more visibility into more social events. So didn't know if there was anything different on that side with like what area had budget challenges. But Definitely. Budget is a huge concern. And I think even now, just with the state of the world and how things are just changing dynamically, budgets continue to be a concern, especially especially these days. So that's a very that's a very big challenge challenge that you that you pointed out for sure. Mm-hmm. Another one you talked about was like staying on top of trends. What helps you to stay on top of trends? Like if you could give some just some advice for our listeners on how they can stay on top of industry trends. What What is your go-to for for that? So be update, updated with the resources in the industry. For example, listen to your podcast. <laughs> oh. read, read blogs, follow the real experts that are 
on top of trends that create trends even on social media and also in your professional career gather feedbacks so you you do something and people give you feedback if it's excellent then you are doing fine you you are on trends nothing is outdated etc so just uh, never say that I know everything and I don't care about trends because trends are not being created from from nowhere. It's statistically, trends are the, let's say, the most effective way to do something or most attractive way to do something at the given point of time, at that time. Yeah. So... That will be my advice, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, stay up to date on all of the all of the industry, like you said, blogs and podcasts, and stay on top of what actually everyone's doing. So that's great. Okay, so I wanted to ask you if you could just give some of the planners like you just a real quick perspective of your of the Permi app because this app especially when it comes to planning and arranging social events can be something that makes an event planner's life easier or even your social events, right, that you plan for your life. For example, if I were to have to coordinate an anniversary for my parents or whatnot and I need some a tool to do that, I think your tool can be very helpful in those kind of cases because while event planners maybe are really busy doing all their things with the bigger events that they have, I think Hermes app can meet them in some of the personal areas of their lives and make things easier overall. So would love for you to just walk us through how the app can make that easier. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that question. So Permit is just a tool. It, uh, it has been designed to alleviate many of the common pain points associated with event planning, particularly for personal social events. As I said, it's a tool, so you can do something simple with a tool and you can do something very sophisticated using the tool. So it's... The first, like, main one is centralized planning. So Permit acts as a one-stop shop or, or we can say an all-in-one solution for personal events because it has, like, many features that a simple, like, an average user, for example, for inviting, making, like, seating plans, arranging seating plans, will use multiple tools, multiple messengers, chats, so he can send the invites. He can design invitations in another service, pay for it. He can, in our case, it's only one. So user can set a date, time, create an event timeline that is a smart timeline. If something changes, it's like two taps and it's, and it arranges everything and notifies the guests. So every everyone is gets the updated information about any event if something changes. Deciding on the dress code, menus, uh, like speeches. Also, there is a media storage where each event has its media storage. So it's it's for example my grandma or grandpa's birthday. And there is thirty people invited. Some from his uh, some are ex coworkers. The other relatives and some people don't know each other and they don't know where to send the photos and videos they have made or someone don't know where you can get those videos and photos. You can you should use the clouds, drives, etc. So it's we have a feature that is called Media Storage and everyone just in one tab upload the videos and photos from that event and everyone has the access even it tags you. You can see the pictures or where, you, where are you? Also, we have features like surveying guests, or for example, before the event about their preferences, maybe dietary restrictions. So you can ensure that the event is tailored to the taste and comfort of the attendees. And this proactive engagement reduces last minute surprises and optimizes, you can say, like, uh, guest satisfaction. 
we have the features of the wish list as top list. So everybody know about the wish list. So our wish list, the user can add, just take photos of something and add to his wish list and the guests <clears throat> can reserve the gifts. So it's also convenient and useful for guests. So they know what is reserved, reserved in the wish list and there wouldn't be some duplicates that happened with my friend's birthday. And there is a feature where, where I haven't seen anywhere. It's, it's, we call it stop list. And there you just write everything you don't want to get for your birthday for, for your occasion. It helps to connect feedbacks because after the event, it sends send everyone a push notification that the event is over and maybe you have some feedbacks. And also many, many, many features connected to automation because it reminds everyone with notifications. There is a group chat for each event. If you create an event for your birthday, everyone from the guest list can see the chat. They can chat there. They can plan something together, send some info. That's it for, for the main part. That's great. Do you have a video maybe that I can link in the description with a little bit of an overview or tour or something like that of the app? Maybe that might be, I could definitely put that in the description, send it over. I would love to include that so everyone can see, see it as well. We'll probably link to that landing page for everyone and definitely go and check it out. It sounds like it would help make things so much easier. And that's what we're all about, <laughs> finding solutions for that. So is there anything else as we wrap up here, Gord, that you would like to share with our listeners? Yeah. So for the last words, I can say that I appreciate the opportunity to discuss with you things happening in social event industries for the opportunity to tell professionals, people about our app. And we have special promo code for, especially for your listeners. You can have, find it in the description. And also you can get our app at the store or Google Play, just write permit. Or you can go to our landing page, which is permit.com. You can follow us on the Instagram and keep up with trends. We have that fun stuff, education stuff in our social medias. So everyone's welcome. And we strongly appreciate feedbacks about our product. It can be negative feedback, it can be positive feedback. Feedback as it's new product, we are developing and improving. So we appreciate any feedback that you can give. So feel free to contact us anytime. Okay. Uh, Thank you so much. I will make sure that that information is listed in the description for everyone to see. Before we wrap officially, Gore, I just have a couple of questions for you. Every guest that comes on the podcast, I give them a few questions at the end just to get to know you a little bit more and it's just some really nice quick fun questions so are you up for up for this little question experience here at the end let's try let's try it let's try it so my first question for you is give us a place that you recommend for for traveling a lot of the event planners are a lot big travelers so let us know your travel recommendation Aha. Uh-huh. So I will like suggest traveling. I am, I am Armenian and I live in Armenia. It's a very small country, but we have very interesting history. Uh, and it's, it's a mountainous country, especially if you like mountains and we have very unique cuisine. So traveling for like gastronomical experience, it's also very nice. I would, su- I would suggest traveling in general. So if you can travel, gain experience, talk with people, integrate in the co- into communities. So I myself, I would like to travel right now to 
some Asian countries and I would like to visit Africa also. But right now there are a ton of work, so <laughs> I don't have, I, I can't manage to find time to do that, but it's take notes. Like I see something interesting, take notes. So I hope in your future I will fulfill those. Awesome. Thank you. So Armenia, and I love your other travel, travel aspirations. I'm sure you'll be able to get those fit in here <laughs> at some point. My next question for you is what would be a book recommendation that you would have, let's say a professional development recommendation? Oh, it's an interesting question. It depends of the of of the preferences because I myself I wrote many books. I now I'm a lecturer in a university. Okay. I haven't mes- mentioned that when I was introducing myself. Yeah, I'm lecturing marketing in a French university in Armenia. Yeah, I, I wrote many books about marketing, personal development, but I personally prefer a short, short content maybe. Okay. Yeah. Like don't don't read a book because when the book is published, it's already a bit outdated. Let me say yeah. because <laughs> the yeah, way things the are author changing. Writes, yeah, he writes in two three years based mm-hmm. on his experience, and it goes to the production, post production, marketing. It's out. You wait, you buy, and there also the the disinformation is now six years old, for example, and mm-hmm. some things change maybe. So I prefer more faster, more oral content. I prefer podcasts. I prefer audio books. If we are talking about the formats, because I can listen to them while driving to work, mm-hmm. driving to university. Maybe. So what is your favorite podcast that you go to for marketing? Yeah, there is like a podcast that is called Everyone Hates Marketers, for example. There are some more like tech marketing oriented, mm-hmm. like marketing growth por- podcast, podcast with uh, Neil Pate. Mm-hmm. I just, I just start and listen and try. Yeah. <laughs> I love podcasts. So always interested to hear what other, what everybody is listening to. So yeah, Neil Patel, he has a great podcast too, when it comes to marketing. Thank you for sharing that. So my last question is just, what do you do to help relax yourself after after work, giving yourself a break. What are some of the what are the hobbies or some of the things that you do in order to give yourself a break? Mm-hmm. Interesting question. So I have two uh, big hobbies. One is music. I play guitar at a band and do vocals. It's a metal band. Mm-hmm. And also, I'm a huge fan of Dungeons and Dragons and the board games. Okay. So I I like to gather with friends, like a small circle of friends, with six, seven friends, and play some board games, play Dungeons and Dragons, have fun, relax, mm-hmm. get them more into this stuff, not going to clubs or yeah. And also, I love nature and going to nature and hike a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good too. I love hiking. I love hiking. Thanks so much for sharing. I know sometimes those questions can be can be tough to answer, but I appreciate you sharing with our listeners and just really appreciate you for being here on the podcast. So thank you so very much for being my guest. Thank you too very much. It was a great pleasure. To talk thank you. Thank you. Well, that wraps it up here for this episode of the Planners on Purpose podcast for today. I wish you well in your planning. And until next time, please stay on purpose. Well, that wraps it up for this episode. If you enjoyed the conversation, hit the like button and tell us how much you enjoyed the show by leaving a message in the comments. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.